So today, check this out down here. It's a dock, it's a stand, it's actually Sateki's dual dock stand. Let's get into it. So welcome back to the channel. I got an interesting product down here. You can see it's sitting way going across the bottom down here. Looks like a dock, right? Looks like a stand. Well, again, this is Sateki. They have a new product coming out and I don't do product reviews fully. I do product showcases. So I'm showcasing this product for everybody out there, right? And this is a new product by Sateki. I'm gonna throw the box over here and uh, you guys can, uh, you know, I'll show you some close-ups as I'm talking about the box and stuff. What makes this product so interesting we're gonna talk about. Now, not only am I gonna go through all the ports down here, but I'm gonna show all the positives of why this thing is, is actually really attractive for a lot of people that own MacBooks, right? I'm also gonna explain um, a couple of little hidden features in this thing as well as a couple misses, but I'm gonna explain how to fix those misses. And if you fix those misses, this thing becomes even better, all right? So overall, we're gonna get into this video. I'm gonna go over this hub dock down here, dock hub stand, I guess they call it, and explain to you why I like this thing and why it's so innovative. And you know me, I always try to find the most innovative products out there. And here's another one by Sateki. So without further ado, let's get into this actual stand hub dock. All right, so what do we have here? If you look at their website here, it's called the Dual Dock Stand. It's $149.99. So again, it's not the cheapest product out there, but you always get quality from Sateki. You're not worried about it frying components and stuff. It's usually a good product from Sateki. Keep that in mind, all right? You're gonna pay a little bit more. So here's their website. If you go over to Amazon, same thing, $149 here. And you can see, if I scroll down here, let me just get to the model number, if I can find it. It's the STDDSM, ST-DDSM. I'll put it somewhere over here. Anyways, you get the idea. That's what it is. There's all the information you need as far as the model number. Now, again, you're gonna say, well, wait, what, why is this 149 bucks for a hub? What, what are the features it has? Well, first of all, let me go through a couple of the, the key ones, right? It's a stand, well, why is it a stand? Well, it actually props up your MacBook perfectly. See here, it actually has it at an angle. I'll show you close-ups as I'm talking, but as you're typing, the ergonomics of your wrists and everything becomes so much better with this. It actually props it up just at the perfect height to make typing super easy, and it props up the screen at your face. So overall, there's the kind of the stand it's talking about, and it does work really well there. It does have a rubber bottom on it, on the bottom side, and then it has this black area that you actually put your MacBook on. Now it's compatible with a bunch of MacBooks, and I'll kind of put a list here, and a couple Windows you know, laptops as well. Now it's mostly for MacBook, and I'm gonna explain that in a second, so when we get into the ports and stuff, why this is really for a MacBook. Not so much the color, even though you know, it matches perfectly space gray down here, but there's some other reasons in there why this is for your MacBook more than kind of a Windows PC. So there it is, now I'm gonna move this over here. Let me just go ahead and throw this thing right over down here, drop it down there. Boom. All right, so here we go. So what do we have here? Well, number one, if you look at the cable over here, it's got two different USB-C ports there. I'll show you close-ups of that. So this thing plugs right into your MacBook on like, a, I have an M1 MacBook Air there. These are the exact same distance as those two USB-C ports. You plug it right into your MacBook and there you go. You do need to use both of them, so you're losing all your ports there. That's a key, but it's also, you know, just I wanted to explain why this is kind of made for the Mac there. This little dongle comes out like this and you can push it back in and out. But overall, some of the, you know, Windows Macs, uh, Windows Macs, Windows, Laptops, they actually have the same configuration with these two USB-C ports, I guess, and that's why you can use this for that, but you do need to plug both of them in. All right, so what are the ports here? And then I'm gonna get into that hidden secret, um, and then the miss, and then I explain how you fix that miss. All right, so on the back of it, it's got a whole bunch of ports. So it's got um, a power delivery, 75 watts, so you can pass through power, charge your MacBook just fine. It's got two USB-C, one at five gigabits per second, one at 10 gigabits per second. It's got two HDMI that are 4K 60, one display port, again, 4K 60. It's got two USB-A, one's 10 gigabits per second, one's only five gigabits per second, but still great ports. And then you got the ethernet, one gigabit per second there as well. So overall, it gives you a whole bunch of different ports here. Now, if you wanna connect different monitors, one key thing is you cannot connect to the USB-C, unfortunately. You do have to use HDMI or display port, and you can connect up the, the two different monitors. So there you go with that. So that's overall, it also has, a, I forgot something, a power switch, see it there? I'll show you close up. Turns green when it's on and red when it's off. All right, what is the hidden feature here and then what's the miss? And then we'll do a speed test as well. Speed test, well, yeah. On the back of it, there you go. So this thing actually takes uh, M.2 SSD and uh, it's, it's got a couple cool things. So there's a couple models that came out like this with other manufacturers 
and they really got really hot. You know, this can take an NVMe drive, and you know, I'm going to go ahead and test one in a second, and I'm going to test my standard one, my SN770 from Western Digital. So, long story short, you can pop one in here, and this can be additional storage as well, so you don't have anything else on your desk. And if you looked at this, the cool thing is, is this is so clean of a setup. When you have it on your desk and you have the SSD drive in here, there's literally nothing around you. I'll show you a picture. That's everything. That's your hub and everything all on your desk. There's no wires. All the wires are coming out the back, so you don't even see those. So it's a great clean setup for people that like that, all right? Now, the SSD in the back, again, you can put in a SATA M.2 in here as well. Sometimes I recommend that because it doesn't you run into no heat issues. But the cool thing, like I was saying about this, is this one actually has vents in it. You can see them here. I'll show you some close-ups. And they have them on both sides. So this vents really well, the heat out of this. So I've had very few problems with heat on this, and I'm running an NVMe drive. In fact, I'm running that SN770. And we'll do a speed test on that in one second, all right? So long story short, what is the miss on this? So overall, the miss is one, you know, one thing that people are going to notice right away. This has no SD card slots, all right? So you can't really do SD card reader slots in here. It's missing them. Well, I thought about it for a second, and I thought they, you know, Sateki had a miss here because I should have added one small cable that would have totally helped you, but this will fix your problem. So if you actually, let me go ahead and pull it up on my screen here. Take a look here at Amazon. It's $11.99. You can find these. It's a USB-A, um, I guess 3.1 or whatever, 3.0 to this little dongle, it's by Uni, and that is an SD card reader for both standard and micro. So you can go ahead and use this and just attach it to this. Now, why is that better than having it built in? I'll explain. Imagine you're typing on this thing like this, you have your computer in front of you and you want it to be clean. If you have to get an SD card in, it's the same problem with the old Macs. You have to reach around, move the whole thing around, get behind your desk, whatever. It's impossible to get the SD card because you can't see it. With a cable like this, if you can imagine, you're going to plug it right into the USB-A right here. See it right there at the end? That little cable is going to stretch right over here, and then you're going to have your SD card reader right next to this thing, right here in front of you, so you can easily stick it in the front. That's why this thing's perfect. It's the same color. It's not even the same company, but it's, it should be added with this. They should sell it with this thing, and it would fix that major flaw, right? So you just add that $12, or what is it, $12 feature, and this thing's golden, all right? So anyways, I like the hub. Overall, I don't do full reviews. I just wanted to show you the, you know, showcase the features here. Um, everything's been working super solid for me. No heating issues or anything like that. So with that said, let's just go ahead and we're going to do a little bit of a speed test here. So hold on. I want to show you how fast this drive can be. All right, so we're going to select the drive here. And let's go ahead and do a speed test on this. So I'm going to make sure I select Western Digital Black. There's the drive right there and click open. So how fast is this thing? We're using... The Western Digital SN770, we're getting 770 or 733 on the writes, 627 on the reads. We'll do one more test here, 758 on the writes, and then on the reads, 651 or 652 basically. Again, that's using the, the SN770 by Western Digital. All different drives are going to have different speeds here. If you use a SATA drive, it might be around the 500s, but you're going to get cooler temperatures in there as well. So overall, I mean, you just got to pick what's best for you, all right? Now, the reason I love this thing, again, is because of the ergonomics of it. It really made a big difference for me when I'm typing. I just want to throw that in there one last time. You're also paying for a lot of good ports and the quality of this thing. You're not getting some crazy company that a lot of people haven't heard of. sateki has been around for a long time, and you're connecting it to very expensive equipment. But again, I'm just giving you my information. You do your own research for what's right for you. If you do want that additional storage, you can see it here. You're going to get that, you know, 750, 60, something, somewhere in there, writes and stuff, which is fast enough for most people, right? It's not going to be Thunderbolt 4 or anything like that. So you got to get away from, you know, having Thunderbolt 4 and something like this. At the end of the day, is this hit or miss for me? I actually like it. I mean, I wish the price, I mean, maybe you can wait for a sale. If the price is slightly lower, I'm sure on Amazon they do offer sales from time to time on this thing. So you can wait or you don't have to wait. Overall, though, if, if this is a little bit cheaper, it would be perfect. But, I mean, even at this price, you know, a lot of docks are expensive. You're getting the quality. You're getting the SSD drive. And then you have that little dongle you should buy for the extra SD cards for an additional 12 bucks. But it's actually better than being on the back because you can pull it to the front, and it looks perfect. It looks cool. So overall, I, you know, I have to say, this is, I think, a hit for Sateki. And uh, definitely check it out. I'll have links to all this in the video description. And subscribe to my channel. I do showcases like this all the time for people. I just want to show people what's out there. And here's just another cool hub by Sateki. They're usually creating these cool, innovative products. And I got to showcase them. And just here's another one. So we'll talk to everybody soon. Peace.